Uh, hello everyone. Uh, last year I gave, gave a talk about pen testing IS applications without uh, jailbreak. Uh, in this year I decided to change the site and show you how to build modern IS applications uh, securely. Uh, so, my name is uh, Wojciech Regua, as I was introduced. Uh, I'm a senior IT security consultant at Securing, uh, where I'm mostly focused on iOS app security. And in free time, I'm, I run a blog and the link that you can see on the slide. And it's also mostly focused on iOS applications and macOS application security. And somebody of you may know me from uh, OWASP security knowledge framework that I uh, contributed to. Okay, so this presentation uh, will be about most frequent vulnerabilities uh, in new iOS applications that we find during uh, conducting penetration tests. Uh, we don't have, of course, the time to, to talk about everything, so I selected the most interesting uh, ones. And my Twitter and mail will be displayed, hold the presentation on the uh, top of the slide. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or ping me or on Twitter. All right, so I introduced myself. Uh, now I want to know something about you. So who of you are from security divisions? Or, right? Almost 30%, I think. And what about developers? Are there any? Okay, so about 20%, I think. All right, so uh, the persons are almost equal, I think. So I will uh, focus both on the security, the offensive and defensive side of this. Okay, so agenda. At first, we will talk about uh, iOS platform myths and reality. Uh, then I'll go through a mobile application verification standard. Then in each category, I will show you the vulnerabilities that we uh, frequent uh, find. I uh, will show you also the solution. And uh, we'll also discuss uh, the features that were presented on the uh, latest WWDC. Uh, in the third point, I will uh, present you my new library. This is the first announcement of this library, so uh, watch uh, you know, <coughs> carefully. Uh, and at the end, uh, I will show uh, the developers, especially the developers, short and long term uh, things to implement in your code. And uh, I will uh, say about uh, quick summary of the vulnerabilities that we were uh, talking about. All right, so we're going to uh, part one, platform myths and reality. And this block, I will show you that we cannot rely on uh, iOS platform 100%. Uh, so the first myth is that Apple's review is 100% reliable. Uh, and it's not true. Uh, guys from Guardian Mobile Firewall uh, find an application that they reversed, uh, let it say malicious application. Uh, and what this uh, code snippet does is it checks whether the application was run in Cupertino, where are, of course Apple is based, and if they do a dynamic review, they, uh, the functionality was hidden. So. Yeah, it, it, it was a pretty neat uh, bypass of app review. So we cannot rely on this 100%. Uh, the second myth, there is no jailbreak for iOS 11 plus. And it's also, again, not true because uh, we have Undecimus that is uh, open source uh, jailbreak. So if you are curious how, does it, how it works, uh, you can uh, check it on, the, on this uh, GitHub uh, site. All right, and the uh, uh, third myth, uh, no jailbreak means no reversing apps. And it's, again, not true because uh, from, um, uh, uh, from probably one year, we have a Corellium uh, that fully virtualizes uh, iOS. So all you need to do is just to you know, create a new device, select the iOS version. It may be even the newest one, uh, tick whether the device should be jailbroken or not. And then uh, you just can 
access it via SSH so and dump the application as a regular pandas we do. Okay, so you are probably convinced that iOS platform is not, uh, will not do security for us, so we have to do it for ourselves. So this is the part two, secure development. And the uh, first uh, category in mobile application verification standard is architecture. And when we start talking about iOS uh, architecture, uh, we usually uh, have to decide in which language uh, we want to uh, write our code. And uh, Swift is, of course, the uh, newest one than Objective-C. Objective-C is, by the way, uh, just a wrapper on C because when you compile Objective-C code, it's first translated to pure C and then compiled. So all the uh, vulnerabilities that are common to uh, C programming language exist also in Objective-C. Uh, and comparing it to Swift, uh, for example, when we have integer overflow, if we overflow the integer, uh, it causes runtime error, so it, it won't uh, accept bugs like that. Uh, we don't have a direct memory access. Of course, there are unsafe methods, but they are explicitly named, like, uh, for example, unsafe pointer. And about format strings, uh, coming to see, uh, they are mitigated through uh, string interpolation. So we just do backslash, you know, braces and uh, mm, the, the parameter that will be, of course, interpolated. All right. And when developing apps in Swift, uh, we also uh, have few myths. And the first one I wanted to present to you is uh, that Swift uh, obfuscates itself. It's, of course, not true. I had a situation uh, from my client uh, where uh, they said uh, they don't need to obfuscate their iOS applications because uh, obfuscate does it itself. It auto obfuscates itself. Of course, it's not true. Uh, what Swift does, it's name mangling, and you probably may know it from, for example, C++. So um, let's imagine we have uh, this piece of code. Uh, the test class, and uh, it's just a clock. It's every one second, in, it prints incrementing number. So we have one class, uh, one instance variable, constructor, and two methods. And when we compile this code, uh, we can use nm, the Swift tester, and grep for test class. That was the name of the class. And as you can see, uh, these strings means something, it's not an obfuscation. And as you can see, uh, the underscore dollar, for example, uh, indicates that a Swift symbol, then we have a uh, length of the name of the module name, so on, so on, and return values, etc. But uh, even Apple provides uh, a tool that will automatically demangle the names for you. So when you uh, this grabbed uh, test class uh, strings uh, passed to the XC run Swift demangle, you can see how this uh, weird strings uh, will be translated to human readable form. Okay. And another myth in Swift is that uh, Swift methods cannot be dynamically changed. Uh, it's not true because we can use Frida and just hook its symbol. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Frida, it's just a dynamic instrumentation toolkit for developers. So we have to uh, create a script like this. And as you can see, uh, we just attach uh, to the uh, program. We uh, find export by name. We pass the symbol. And whenever our clock returns the, the value, we just replace it with lead. So it's a demo time that I will show you how it works. Okay. So at first, I'll try to run this. Okay, can you see it? Yes, okay. So when I run the Swift tester, as you can see, it just prints the number that is increasing. And then we'll open the Frida with the script that I showed you. OK. 
Okay. Resume it. And as you can see, uh, the number is replaced with lead that we <coughs> wanted to, to do. Okay. Let's open. And the takeaways from this module is that uh, in uh, Swift protects your application against basic binary vulnerabilities, as you as you can can see. Uh, Swift enforces deliberate usage of insecure uh, methods, like for example, unsafe pointer. And there is no obfuscation. Uh, if you uh, treat obfusc if you if you consider that uh, someone will reverse engineer your application that you don't want to, uh, you can use obfuscator like SwiftShield that is free, open source, and kudos for Rock Bruno for doing this. Okay, and the WWC feature from uh, this block is the is automated uh, SMS code input. So uh, it's a little bit controversial because let's imagine we have an iPhone, SMS in comes to our phone and Apple process does some magic, let's say, and it retrieves the, for example, 2FA token from this SMS and it uh, passes it, it to your native application. So when you tick on this SMS code, it is passed to, the, for example, input value. So the input value, uh, if you want to uh, re retrieve the token, just needs need to be uh, set with this text content type, one time code, and iPhone will automatically uh, uh, get, get, will automatically give you the, uh, the 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 token from the SMS. And on demo, I wanted to present you that any application. Uh, is able to do this. So there is no uh, connection between from which number uh, the SMS code should be passed to your application. Any application that has this uh, text content type set can uh, retrieve the token if you press it. So there is a possibility that someone will uh, trick a malicious, uh, will trick the user to uh, pass the token into the malicious application. So it works like this. Uh, on the background, there is the code on, of the application that, uh, that can be seen on the right. And now I'm sending the uh, iMessage message. And as you can see, this, uh, this token is <coughs> shown here and is passed to the text input field. OK. So now we're going to uh, data storage, the second uh, OWASP category. Uh, and the most common issue that we uh, find in uh, data storage uh, are API keys, like for example, Firebase private keys that shouldn't be there, uh, SSH keys, uh, cloud credentials like AWS keys or uh, Google Cloud keys. And sometimes even a credential fr credentials from test environment that works on production as well. So uh, there was uh, maybe some of you know that there was a similar issue in one of the Polish banks where uh, the credential from test pro from test environment work on the production and you know had an access to real money. So yeah, it's it's an issue that we uh, find some find frequently. And uh, sensitive data may be insecurely stored in uh, InfoPay list, uh, user defaults in regular files, then can be, can be even hard coded into binary as a, just as strings in a binary. And we all know that Keychain uh, is the place that, you know, the small secrets should be saved. It's the, it's the way how Apple has in, in documentation that we have to, to, to write the secrets in. But some of the data that I shown you before shouldn't be at all on the device, never on the device. And placing them into the keychain uh, is wrong too. Okay, so uh, Siguza, the famous iOS security researcher, um, shared his research uh, where he summarizes the iOS spyware. And as you can see, there are a lot of uh, any kinds of spyware that uh, retrieves the user data from iCloud backups. <clears throat> so we have to 
uh, know which data from iOS application are uh, actually back, backed up. And these directories are, for example, uh, documents, uh, uh, library application support, library preference, and any other f directories uh, in library uh, without caches, and of course, temporary is not uh, backed up. Okay, so uh, WWC uh, feature uh, from the uh, last conference is credential provider extension. So it allows you to use iCloud Keychain and your external password managers like 1Password or NPass also in native applications. And uh, the case is similar like with uh, automated SMS code input. You just need to uh, add the UI text content type and set you know, the username text field to be username and password to be content type password. It's as simple as that. And the takeaways from uh, this part that uh, always check if any sensitive data uh, is not saved in your applications. Uh, for sensitive data stored in Keychain that you don't want to be saved in iCloud, use this long string, KSEC attribute accessible when with this device only, that will make sure that the sensitive data from the Keychain won't leave your device. And if you need to uh, store something in regular files, the bigger ones that can, you know, Keychain can, uh, can contain, uh, consider using UI kit protection that will encrypt the the files on the iOS, and uh, you can also improve your text inputs to help credential providers uh, work well with your applications. Okay, so the third block, cryptography, and the most frequent vulnerability that we can find here uh, is insecure token generation. Uh, I give you as exact as example a bear case that I found. So. The bear allowed is uh, alternative to Evernote, so it uh, stores the, 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 your notes, and it had a f it has actually the functionality when it uh, handles a URL scheme to to which uh, any application could uh, to, could communicate with and retrieve uh, your notes and. You need an access token to this, of course, application to make sure that any malicious or unwanted application won't retrieve your node. And the uh, token, the generation mechanism uh, looked like this. I uh, re rewrote this code to be uh, to exploit this uh, vulnerability. And without reading it and going to the details, as you can see on the beginning, it takes a date, the current date. Uh, does MD5 from this date, and then some magic uh, bit shuffles on, on, on them. So as you can see, the vulnerability here is that uh, predicting the date or even brute forcing it, it's not, it's not a really hard job to do. So I wrote a full exploit on macOS that could uh, retrieve the, your notes. Uh, if you are interested uh, in how I did it, uh, with details, you can visit my blog and uh, and read about this. So I'll give you a few seconds to make a photo. All right. Okay, I think everyone down they took this photo and uh, the WWC feature from cryptography is that mentioned before autofill uh, can now create new passwords connected with your uh, domain and you are able to natively set the policy that will be applied on the password so uh, as you can see there is UI text input password rules and you pass the string what's required so for example one upper one lower dig uh, the digits uh, some characters consecutive and minimum length so now you c from now we can do it natively which is uh, what is a great feature and the takeaway from, from this blog is that uh, do not create your homemade ciphers because it's really hard to do this uh, securely. And treat your encryption algorithm as a public because 
you know, any application can be reversed and the algorithm may be, uh, may be known by the attacker. And uh, you don't uh, need more to use uh, third party uh, uh, encryption libraries uh, because this method, say, key create encrypted data, is now a native mechanism that uh, allows Swift to d do AES or RSA encryption. And uh, if, if you deal with passwords, you can now use native uh, password policy that will be you know, much easier to maintain in the future. All right, and uh, session management. Uh, the most frequent bugs, again, uh, is here uh, local access control that is, of course, made locally. And the, the, the proper way how to do this is, of course, do every check on server side. And whenever uh, the application uh, deals with sessions and they are uh, stored in JWT, uh, we have to make sure that uh, we sign, of course, the uh, the, the whole uh, JSON, and we have to, of course, verify this signature because there are a lot of cases where uh, the signature was applied on the JWT, but it was not checked on the uh, server side. All right, and the uh, five block uh, network communication, and uh, here is. Uh, there are, you know, simple solution, uh, and the, the most frequent bugs we can find here is uh, H plain HTTP connections. So try to avoid this and use HTTPS. And from iOS 9, uh, there is app transport security that is uh, now by default uh, feature. Uh, that enforces, for example, uh, usage of HTTPS, and a lot of developers um, used to uh, just turn turn it off, just add then your this domain which application communicate communicates to as an exclusion. So uh, it causes, as you probably know, uh, a lot of different problems. Uh, so. Another bug that we find in network communication uh, is that uh, if you use HTTPS, always check if the certificate is trusted. And uh, the, what's interesting, the problem exists uh, really common when developers implement certificate pinning mechanism. And you know, when, when we have an when we have applications with uh, certificate pinning, it's uh, usually the certificate usually is not trusted. So developers have to manually uh, turn off the certificate verification check. And the problem exists when they uh, you know, s stop support certificate pinning, and, uh, but, but they t don't turn on the, certif the certificate uh, trust check. And uh, what it causes uh, that uh, attackers are of course able to uh, intercept the SSL traffic because they uh, can provide any SSL certificate that will be trusted by the application. And from a real life example, for example, uh, Twitter had a similar problem. And as you can see, the, bug, the, the bounty that was paid was over uh, $2,000. Okay. And the uh, next category is uh, platform interaction. Uh, in Apple environment, uh, the most frequent used uh, inter-application communication or inter-process communication are XPC and Mac messages. Uh, they are widely used in uh, iOS as well, but uh, you as a developer don't have uh, you know, a direct access to it, so we won't cover it. Um, in macOS, uh, when you use XPC or Mac messages, uh, the point, the, 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 the most uh, um, important thing here is to verify if, uh, ver verify if the sender is the, the one that you expect. On iOS, uh, we uh, use URL schemes, AirDrop, and Clipboard, but please do not do Clipboard for inter-process communication. I saw it into wild uh, many times, and it's, it's not a good way how to do this because uh, every time you put something in the clipboard, any application can have access to it and even modify it. So as you can probably think about this, it's not an expected uh, behavior. 
All right, and the examples from real life. Uh, for example, Grab uh, had a similar problem with uh, URL schemes, and they paid it. They paid f uh, over uh, seven uh, thousand uh, dollars for it. And for, again, Twitter. Uh, that it was just an interesting bug uh, that uh, iOS application can establish FaceTime calls without user's permission. Very interesting. And the takeaway from the sixth category. Uh, is that check if a message comes from expected sender, uh, strictly, strictly validate the parameters, and if this uh, URL scheme and the parameters that, that the URL schemes contain uh, the, are passed directly to the web view, please check uh, the permissions of this web view because uh, it can uh, lead to serious consequences. Okay. And the uh, uh, seventh category, that is uh, code quality. So <clears throat> the, the, there are the three uh, main uh, things to, 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 to take about, to take care about. Uh, so uh, the first one is uh, do not use deprecated APIs. Um, libraries that you use may also have vulnerabilities that I will show you on the next slide. And if you use any dependency managers like CocoaPods or Cartage, please do not hard code uh, the fixed versions. So if you open, for example, the pod file and you see the library name equals some number, it's not how it should be done because these uh, libraries uh, can also uh, have vulnerabilities. As you can see on this example, uh, the IF networking library and this version uh, allowed to uh, perform an in the middle attack because, uh, as you can see, uh, without going into the details, uh, the, it was the example that I described to you before. Uh, when uh, the, the, this AF networking to take care about the certificate pinning, and if the certificate pinning was disabled, the certificate, the SSL certificate, was not uh, checked if it's trusted or not. Okay. And uh, in WWDC, uh, Apple deprecated the UI web view, and uh, it's 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 a good news for us because uh, UI web view wasn't actually uh, really secure because uh, it handled file handler, so uh, any XSS. Uh, when, when when of course attacker could exploit the XSS. Uh, uh, they were they was able to uh, they were able to steal uh, local files from the from the container, and by the way, uh, WebKit WebView has also this file functionality, but it's it's not uh, turned on by default, so we have to do this manually. And the interesting thing uh, is that I found uh, this uh, bugs in real Apple applications. Uh, the first one I want to show you is uh, the, the uh, macOS standard dictionary. So, without going into the details, uh, it was uh, really uh, old technology because when you wanted to create a new dictionary, you had to compile it. So, uh, the, m the most of time that I uh, spent to exploit this vulnerability took me to compile this dictionary. So. So it was you know, really, really hard job to do. And um, the exploit uh, looked like this. Uh, so you just create, create a malicious entry, uh, insert the script tags, and using Ajax, just steal the etc password uh, and send it to my listener. So it was as simple as that. Uh, so the demo. I run the netcat, and now I'm opening the malicious entry. And as you can see, uh, the etc password was sent to my listener. So just a simple Ajax script that allowed to uh, steal uh, local files from the user. And the second uh, Apple's application that I wanted to show you is uh, Help Viewer. 
And at first, I wanted to kudos Loki Hart from Google Project Zero that find this vulnerability like one month before me. But uh, it happened that Apple uh, didn't f fix the core of the issue. So it was, again, usage of UI WebView that had an access to local files. So I uh, <coughs> uh, find another way to exploit this vulnerability. In this case, I created a malicious documentation uh, that uh, could be open using the uh, help xhelp uh, URL scheme. I pass some JavaScript. and just sent it via iMessage. And whenever the victim clicks on it, uh, it launches the script and opens the calculator. Because what was interesting in Help Viewer, it had registered a few uh, additional URL schemes that allowed to uh, open arbitrary file on the uh, Mac OS. OK. And, uh, example from non-Apple applications. Uh, for example, uh, Yahoo iOS application uh, had this uh, use UI WebView to, uh, to preview some, some data. So for example, when you send uh, some XML, it run it like a real HTML, and it, the attacker was able to uh, steal user cookies from your Yahoo email on, on iOS. OK. And the uh, uh, last category, uh, that is resiliency requirements. Uh, and uh, when we talk about resil resiliency requirements, uh, the most common uh, issue here is a uh, problem with anti-tampering. So anti-tampering uh, is for those who don't want their application to be tampered with, uh, for those who include malware risk in the threat model, that where probably when uh, there is a malware, it will probably uh, at first jail jail jailbreak your device and then exploit something. And uh, some of developers, of course, just uh, need to be compliant with OWASP mo mobile application security verification standard during the pen test. So uh, this is the first announcement of my uh, new library for developers, uh, iOS security suit uh, that detects uh, the jailbreaks with new indicators because uh, things uh, have changed since uh, iOS uh, 10. Uh, it uh, checks for attached debuggers, uh, the common uh, use tampering tools like, for example, Frida or Needle or any Frida-based uh, reverse engineering uh, tool that is uh, used on iOS. And uh, in this version 1.0, it also uh, checks if your application was run in the emulator. So if you want to download it, it's uh, accessible on a GitHub. So I'll give you a few seconds to do a photo. All right. And now live demo. I wanted to make it really uh, easy to use for developers. So everything you need to do is to just uh, download it via or Cartage or uh, CocoaPods, uh, import the iOS security suit, and for example, we can uh, check whether our application is, for example, uh, running emulator. <coughs> so I'll build this and launch. And as you can see, the simulator opened, and it returned true, because it's emulator, so it's, it, it returned true, of course. So it's pretty easy to use for developers, and may increase your application security. OK. <clears throat> so here we come to uh, the summary. And the uh, summary for, for uh, pen testers and 
uh, other people from uh, offensive security divisions. So the most common vulnerabilities that we uh, find in modern IS applications are uh, sensitive data without any protection that may be backupped. Uh, API keys, cloud credential, working on production test accounts in application packages, as I said, uh, network issues, app transport security misconfiguration, uh, poorly protected URL schemes, and fixed library versions. So if you do uh, uh, the security assessments of uh, iOS applications, uh, you can focus on 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 this point because uh, they uh, they are uh, the most frequent ones, and as I promised, uh, recommendations for uh, developers. So in short te short term, you can optimize your application to work properly with password managers and autofill. If your of course, if your application uses, for example, SMS as a two FA. And uh, if you uh, are developing a high-risk application, you should consider uh, anti-tampering uh, tools um, to protect your application uh, more deeply. And in long term, if you use UI WebView, you should probably uh, think about WK WebView now because UI WebView is, as I said, uh, deprecated now. Uh, if you 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 if if you uh, use uh, if you use pa passwords to 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 log in into your application, you can now use native password policy. And if your application is wrote in Objective C, uh, it's probably a good time since Swift is more and more stable to think about uh, Swift. I, I I won't say that you have from now uh, rewrite your uh, applications to Swift because. I know the reality, but it's a good time to start thinking about it. All right, and basing on our experience in almost in almost all applications that we uh, test, vulnerabilities exist, and I think, and it's my personal opinion, that uh, most of these vulnerabilities can be uh, fixed by security-aware developers, but if you develop a high-risk application, uh, it's a probably a good practice to conduct uh, pen tests anyway. So for developers, again, uh, we prepared with my uh, colleagues uh, mobile application security best practices. That is a general guideline how to uh, create uh, sec secure mobile applications. So again, I will give you a few seconds to, to make a photo. All right, and this is the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, if somebody of you want to have this presentation on mail, mail uh, please leave me uh, business cards so I can send your, you the presentation. And thank you very much for your attention.